Hi, my name is Lubomira. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel where I show you how to combine manual card making techniques with the Cricut. I'm so excited to be sharing not just a video, but my very first video with you all. So show me some love in the comments below. If you like this video, please click the like button. And if you'd like to see more videos like this one, click to subscribe to my channel. Let's jump right into it. Today we'll be making an ornament card using elements created with the Cricut and then jazzing them up with some cute stamping methods. The first part of the tutorial will show you how to use basic shapes found in Cricut Design Space to make an ornament. You won't need any other program or download. So the first thing we're gonna do is insert three circles directly from the program. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to resize two of those to three and a half inches. And the third one's going to be three inches. After I've resized them, I'm going to take the smallest and one of the larger ones, align them so that they are centered, and I'm going to slice them so it creates a kind of ring or donut. That centerpiece I am not concerned with, so we're going to get rid of that. Since we don't need these shapes for the moment, I'm going to move them out of the way. Next, we need a trapezoid. My fifth grade geometry teacher would be so proud. The program doesn't have the shape available directly from its menu. We need to create one. This is really easy. All you need to do is insert a triangle and a square. I'm simply placing the square over the triangle, covering the top angle about a third of the way. Then I select both shapes and slice you're quickly going to become best friends with the slice and weld feature in this program. After I slice, we won't need the top portion of the triangle of the square or the square. I'm deleting those and all I'm left with is the trapezoid. I'm gonna resize this shape and I'm going to use easy numbers to work with for later on. I'm going to make it four inches wide and two inches tall. Remember to unlock the sizing tool to make that adjustment. Now we have a trapezoid, but we need two. I'm going to dupl duplicate this one. Okay, from there, we're going to need another ring shape. So I'm going to insert another two circles. I'm resizing one to be two inches and the other to be one inch. And like before, I'm centering them together using the alignment tool in the toolbar and then slicing them. Again, I don't need the center, so I'm just going to delete that. Now I'm going to use a handy tool that I found so helpful when I want to line things up precisely. The positioning tool in the taskbar is one of my most used tools in this program. You can position your shapes on exact coordinates that take out some of the guesswork in measuring or aligning parts of your project. First, you have to understand how it works, though. Your workspace is set up on a grid with numbers along the sides and top. Yes, kitties, we are using basic geometry we swore we'd never use in the adult world. Wait, is crafting adulting? I'm going to say it is. Moving right along. There is an X and Y axis. The X axis will move your shape right and left along the grid, while the Y axis will move it up and down. Using that positioning tool, I'm going to select my small ring and set the coordinates at 0, 0. This moves the ring to the top left corner of the grid. Next, I'm going to select my trapezoid and I'm placing it at 0 and 1.75 inches. Both my shapes are aligned up against the left side now, but there is a slight overlap of a quarter of an inch. I want to add that when I'm using Using the positioning tool, I try to use easy numbers that I can quickly divide up, such as halves, quarters, or tenths. Anyway, here I'm going to select both shapes again, and I'm going to head towards the alignment tool. Instead of selecting the center alignment like we did with the circles, this time I'm selecting the center horizontal option. This will center the shapes, but only along the X axis and not the Y. Once they are centered, I'm going to weld them together to create what will become the top portion of our ornament. Next, I'm going to duplicate our welded shape, so I have two of them. Then I'm going to resize each of them so they are an inch wide. The height will automatically reduce since the proportions are locked. Now for the trickiest part of the project. We want to create two pieces that will fit identically over each other. To do that, we're going to have to pay special attention to our measurements. I'm going to select one of our topper pieces and using the positioning tool, I'm placing it at zero, zero. Once there, I'm going to take special note of how tall that shape is. 
I need to know that measurement so that I can place my next shape in the right place. Now I'm grabbing the large ring off to the side. Again, I'm heading to the positioning tool and putting in zero and 0.8. This position allows for a slight overlap of my shapes and it's easy for me to repeat on my next step. Once the shapes are positioned along the left side of my grid, I'm using the alignment tool once again and aligning them with the center horizontal option. Then again, I want to weld them together. The next step involves taking the remaining topper piece and the solid circle and welding them together using the previous steps. You know you did it right when your solid background piece and your frame piece measure the same height and width. In this case, 3.5 inches wide by 4.3 inches high. Yay, we're almost done. The last step involves making the decorative piece. We'll be using the last trapezoid and additional circles that I'll add into the project. I'm going to insert a circle and resize it to half an inch. Then I'm going to duplicate it until I have eight circles. I'm moving my trapezoid to the zero zero position. Then I'm going to line up my circles along the bottom edge of the trapezoid so that they overlap a quarter of an inch. The Y axis will remain the same and the X axis will increase in 0.5 increments going from zero to 0.5 to one to 1.5 all the way across the bottom of the trapezoid until you get to 3.5. After the circles are in place, select all the shapes and weld them to create one solid shape, a ruffled trapezoid. The final step is to resize that trapezoid to an inch wide. Again, we are just adjusting the width and the height will automatically change since the two are locked together. And we're done. So now we have an ornament that we can use to customize for a number of projects, including ornaments or even shaker cards. I sent my project to the Cricut to get my pieces for assembly. Once they're cut, I'll have a base, several frames, and a decorative topper. I'll also be listing all my supplies in the description below. The first thing I worked on was my background. I cut a three inch circle from it. This circle was just a middle section cut from this frame piece in a separate colored cardstock. I used Hero Arts cardstock in the color Arctic. I wanted to create some dimension and shine on my background, so I decided to use a stencil and some textured paste. Textured paste is really one of my favorite mediums to use when I'm stamping. I attached my little circle to a plastic palette. I like using palettes for this because it's easy to clean and lightweight to move. I can easily set a project aside to dry and keep working at my workspace. Once my circle is in place, I take my stencil and tape it over my circle using some washi tape. There's some leftover space on my palette for my texture paste. I really enjoy using ranger paste in a matte finish for these types of projects. What's really neat about this medium is its versatility. You can easily add color by mixing in some paint or dye to match a project. Today I'm just using some glitter to create the look of snow. I used some fine wow glitter in white and I just simply sprinkle a little bit into the paste. I'm looking for a gritty toothpaste consistency. If I need more glitter, I can always add some later. After I'm done mixing, I simply put it onto the stencil. I wanna spread it in a thin, consistent layer throughout the area, kinda of like butter and toast. Once I'm done spreading my paste, I remove my stencil and then set the rest of the project aside to dry. This next part may seem a little tricky to explain, so I'm happy to have the video alongside to demonstrate. I wanted to create a layered scene within my ornament. To achieve this, I used the Hilly Neighborhood Metal Die from Mama Elephant. First, I cut out some extra circles measuring three and a quarter inches. I ended up using two of these circles, even though I have three in the video. These circles are going to be sandwiched in between my framed layers, so they have to be larger than the center opening, but smaller than the edge of the entire ornament. You'll better understand what I'm talking about as you watch the video. For the first layer, I place my die high on the circle. I tape the die into place and run it through my die cut, but I do that off camera.
the next layer, I line up my die lower on the second circle so that when I place one on top of the other, I can see the first die cut peek out from behind the second. You can see me using the first hillside as a guide for my second one. I make sure to remove the first one before running my second through the machine. Before assembling my ornament, I need to make an adjustment to one of my die cuts. When I die cut my first piece, one of the houses was only partially cut. Since I don't want that house there, I'm simply going to snip it off and follow the natural curve of the remaining hill. When I'm done, you won't even realize that there was a house there to begin with. We can start putting together our ornament. I took my first die cut and a frame piece and glued them together. I have plenty of wiggle room to move my die cut along the frame's edge. Once I've got it where I like it, I place another frame on top of my first die. Now that hillside is sandwiched between two frames. I make sure that my frames are lined up so that all their parts meet together evenly. You can see me place the next hillside on the frame to line it up, but I don't glue it immediately. I decide that I want to prop it up with some foam dots for added dimension. I place the foam dots behind the windows and doors. That's just to prevent them from falling out later. You may have noticed that one of my doors fell out of the background, but don't worry, I'll glue it back later. Here, I'm going to glue several layers of frame on top of one another. To determine how thick I need my frame, I use my foam dot as a guide. To glue my pieces together, I'm using Tombow Liquid Glue. This is one of my favorite glues because it has a strong hold, but it allows me a little bit of wiggle time to move my pieces before it sets. It also dries clear, which is an added bonus, so I don't have to worry about it seeping out from underneath of my pieces. You can see me building up my frame layer by layer and testing the thickness of my foam dots. With each layer, I make sure it's lined up with the previous one. Before placing my bottom hillside in place, I poke out any little bits of die cut I don't want, mostly in the tree line, using a pick. My final frame is a decorative red frame cut from basil rouge cardstock. And just like pre the previous frames, I'm simply aligning it with the other ones. Now that I have my frames and hillsides in position, I can work on the background and pop it into place. The background piece is the piece that we made earlier using the textured paste. 
To add a little bit more color to it, I'm going to use some Distress Oxide ink and blend a slight halo around the edge using chipped sapphire ink. The blend on the background is very subtle and it isn't really meant to change the color, but rather to give it a more of a deeper rich tone. You'll notice that as I add more color to the background, the snow actually resists the color. So you can see the lighter color showing through. It also keeps its nice glittery sparkle. Since most of the circle is going to be covered by my hillsides, I'm not concerned with putting too much color on the whole thing, just basically around the top edges. Once I'm done blending, it's time to put the background into place. I test how it looks a few times before actually gluing it where it goes. When I'm ready, I put glue on the backside of my hills and houses and pop the background into place. It's also time to glue my base onto the back of the ornament. I make sure that it lines up correctly with the rest of the edges before I press it into place. Next, I'm replacing the little door which popped out earlier and has been hanging out on my workspace. I was having a little trouble because of the texture of the glitter added, but a little glue and a bit of wiggling with the pick and it's back into place. After looking at the piece, I realized that the sparkle in the background was covered mostly by the houses and hillsides, so I wanted to add a little bit more. I went ahead and put a bead of glitter along the roofs of the houses, trees, and the curve of the hillside. Now the ornament is back to its sparkle. It's time to set the ornament aside and work on my card base. First, I die cut a wonky stitched rectangle from Nina Desert Storm cardstock off camera. One of my favorite cardstocks to use around the holidays is Cardcraft. It really brings colors to life. To create the background, I heat emboss the Believe It In The Season Holiday Cling Stamp by Simon Says in gold embossing powder. I first laid my stamp with the rubber facing up on my workspace and then covered the entire image in Versamark ink. Before stamping, I prepped my cardstock with an anti-static tool so I could get a clean impression. Once the stamp and the paper are ready, I put my rectangle on top of the stamp and press it into the image using my fingertips and running them along the backside. Over a scrap piece of paper, I sprinkle embossing powder onto the background, making sure to cover the entire stamped image. Once the image is covered, I tap off the excess and I replace the extra embossing powder back into my jar. While holding my background with tweezers, I hit the project with a heat gun until all the embossing powder is melted.
before I add my stamped reindeer and my ornament to the background, I'm going to pop up my background onto some foam tape and adhere it to a card base made from 110 pound Nina Solar White cardstock. Off screen, I stamped and colored some reindeer from the Mama Elephant stamp set, Reindeer Fun. I used Simon Says Black Intense Ink to stamp the images and Copic markers to color them in. If you're interested in the colors I used, they're listed below in the description. The last part of finishing the card is placing all the elements together. I first put the ornament onto the background to get a general idea of the spacing and I work from there. After a few attempts, I put one reindeer in the bottom left on the card using some foam dots, while I glue the other one to the ornament frame using some tape runner adhesive. Before I finish, I add some more sparkle with a wink of Stella on the bow of the candy cane on one image and the bell of the collar on the other. To attach the ornament to the card, I pierced two holes through the front of the folding card base using a piercing tool. This isn't really anything fancy, but a repurposed manicuring tool. I threaded some baker's twine through the holes using a needle threader and then tied the ornament into place. I found that it would have been easier to just make the holes bigger rather than use the threading tool. I wanted to tie a bow, but I found that I'm not very good at tying them, so I cheat a little. I simply loop some of the baker's twine several times around my fingers and then tie the bundle using the leftover string holding down the ornament. And there's my fluffy bow. To make sure the bundle of string doesn't slip out of place, I then secure it with a bit of glue. I could have left my card plain just like that with the ornament and the two little critters, but I decided I wanted to place a sentiment at the bottom. Using that same stamping set, I heat embossed the sentiment jingle all the way and I propped it up on some foam tape and adhered it right next to the little reindeer in the corner. And that's our finished card. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.